they recall with horror the Laura Spencer Fair and the media hostility to Bristol University's positive efforts to broaden its social intake. Some of the top universities worry about their standing in international league tables if they are seen to soften entry requirements. Many others are simply afraid of being charged with social engineering or positive discrimination. Most believe that the politicians will run a mile if the universities face a media onslaught on these grounds. Now, I understand those concerns, but there is only one answer to them. Universities have to summon up the courage to get out and make a positive argument for change. That cannot be done surreptitiously. It has to be done openly. It cannot be done from a defensive position. It has to be done from a positive one. It means confronting the argument that greater fairness somehow means lower quality. It does not. The evidence suggests it, is, it does not. It is not just the general evidence from the Hefke data across universities. It is the specific experience of individual universities. If anything, the experience of universities like Exeter is that using contextual data improves rather than lower standards. Entrants from lower socioeconomic groups with equal or lower UCAS tariff scores have earned disproportionately high rates of first and upper second degrees. The same is true for medical students who've been through the extended medical degree program at King's. They are top performers in their year group. And if evidence from the UK is not enough to convince universities of the need to go out with confidence to win this argument, then look at the experience of the United States. There, diversity is not regarded as an obstacle to academic excellence, it is a prerequisite for it. Indeed, that principle has been affirmed by the Supreme Court and is reflected in how the top Ivy League universities approach admissions. At Harvard, at Princeton, and at many others, they carefully craft their intake each year to ensure it has a diverse mix of students from different backgrounds with different talents. Prior attainment has a central place in determining who gets in, but so too does the potential to make distinctive contributions to the welfare and society and the quality and of campus diversity. The top US universities do this because they've accumulated evidence to show that diversity adds dynamism to the learning environment. They see no tension between excellence and widening participation. They do not regard these things as enemies. They regard them as friends. I believe it is time we in the UK learned some of those lessons. If our universities are to advance the course of social mobility in our country, they need to better match opportunity to potential and to ability. They need to look themselves in the mirror and ask whether they're doing enough to make their institutions open to the widest possible pool of talent. It is crucial that they now do so in the light of changes to student funding. The social mobility agenda should not just be part of the corporate responsibility of a university, but should be at the heart of what each and every university is there to do. The work that you do, day in, day out, should be the most highly regarded function in any university. It is critical, in my view, if universities are going to play their full part in ensuring that we genuinely can say of our country that it is one where fairness and quality go hand in hand. And I can tell you that the new Social Mobility and Child Poverty Commission, when it comes into being in the middle of next year, will be examining how universities are going about making progress on precisely that agenda. For me, at least, one thing is clear. Modern Britain can't work if it harbors a closed shop mentality. Too many of our institutions still seem to subscribe to the old assumption that progress can be based on a limited pool of talent having access to a limited set of opportunities. It is not just that such elitism is unjust socially. It no longer works economically. Our future success in a globally competitive economy relies on using all of our country's talents, not just some of it. My contention is that it is not a ability that is unevenly distributed in our society, it is opportunity. We will not create a mobile society 
unless we create more of a level playing field of opportunity. We all have a part of playing, to play in making that happen, and our universities of every description in every part of the country, whatever their background, have an important role to play. Thank you very much.